Hello and welcome to the Raspberry Pi coding channel. This is a follow on video to my DIY NAS video in which I show how to host a NAS on a Raspberry Pi. But actually what I'm going to show is applicable to any Linux operating system that's got mounted volumes where those mounts drop off occasionally. So what I'm going to show is a very simple way to make sure that you have those mounted volumes constantly checked and then remounted if they drop off. This is something I found I've had to do. Uh, it could be because my power supply in my house isn't brilliant. It's a very old house. Uh, but I find that occasionally one of my four mounted drives does drop off. And then sometimes when I go on my Windows laptop to connect to that drive, maybe to do a backup, manual backup, I'll find that it's disappeared uh, and I can't connect to it. And that, then I have to go onto my Raspberry Pi and remount it. Bit of a faff. So I wrote a script. So this is all about that script and how to automatically remount those drives. So if you're interested, carry on watching. So let's go and have a look. First, of course, I do have a Patreon account. If you want to support my work, um, get one to one support or suggest content, please do check it out. OK, let's crack on straight away then. And I'm going to hop over to my Visual Studio Code editor. Now, if you're wondering how to connect to your Raspberry Pi, so a remote server, Using Visual Studio Code, check out my Linux Essentials video course, which covers that as part of that course. So what you're looking at here is Visual Studio Code connected through an SSH tunnel to my Raspberry Pi. And this folder structure here is the uh, it's my home directory. It's it's the, my user Ubuntu's home directory on my Raspberry Pi. And amongst the um, amongst the files is nasremount.sh, which is a shell script I wrote. And it's that that I want to share. So we're going to just quickly look at this script and then that'll be it. So let's have a quick look. What have we got at the top of this? Uh, well, let's start from the beginning. This is a bash script, so it's good to include a shebang so that we know it is bash and this will be correctly interpreted. We want we usually have some comments to tell us what this is doing. So again, that's good practice. And sometimes you'd have an author at the top, but I haven't because it's just for me. And then I've got a mount list. So this is a list structure in, in Bash here. And I would add more with a space and then I'd have mount. Well, I can't type today. Mount two, maybe another space and mount three, for example. That's how you would construct your list if you had multiple mounts you wanted to scan. So the mount list is just the mount points that you want to scan. This needs to be the name of your directory that you're mounting on. In my case, it's general home backup. OK, and the way it's going to work is it's going to look in this location using grep to see if those mounts exist or not. So you just need to make sure the name is correct for your mount point. So what is this doing? So that's the list. That's the bit you need to change. Then we've got a function called mount failure. And all it does is it is going to write a, a string to a log file first to tell you that a mount has failed and it was on this date. And I send it to the remount photo backup.log file. And then it's going to run this, which is basically what I run manually whenever my mount point fails. And it just remounts all of the drives. I could actually have changed this and just mounted um, the one that I want to mount that's failed. but this works easily. It runs through the F stab table and mounts everything. Um, and then exit one just exits the program. Now, just to mention on this, I have my Raspberry Pi set up such that I can run sudo without a password. Uh, so I don't have to uh, put a password in. So you might need to do that yourself if you want to run sudo mount minus a in a script or make sure that when you run, run nas remount.sh, you run it as root. Either will work, but just to make you aware of that little tripping point. So that's the function that does the remounting. Um, and that's the list that will define which of the uh, mount points we're actually going to scan over. So the loop here that scans over this list called mount list is just here. So this is what scans over the list. And for each item in the list, we give it the variable x. We then do a search using grep in the proc mounts file to see if the mount point exists. If it does exist, we do nothing. I just sleep zero. This is incredibly lazy programming. But it's fine. It works fine. Basically, I do nothing. If it does exist, I don't need to do anything. The mount is fine. If it doesn't exist, though, we have the else statement. And what I do is I send a message again to my remount photo backup log 
because this is my photo backup um, uh, directory. I, I do a remount. Uh, I sorry, I send a message to the remount log, and I say we've detected the mount is not there, and check failed. And obviously, is this might have to run through five, six, however mount points you've got. So when that's done, I then just run mount failure, which goes up here and runs the function I've just talked about. It is that simple. So just for completeness, I'm going to show you that in action. So here's my Ubuntu um, uh, command prompt, Ubuntu being the machine name for my Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to run this function. Now, if I run it, I'm just going to make sure I've got no, no, I've got no log file currently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this uh, function now with all the mount points in place and see what happens. And it should theoretically do nothing. So dot slash nas uh, remount dot sh. Now, don't forget, by the way, before I run it, if you create this shell file, you will need to make sure it's executable. So uh, chmod plus x will need to be done before it'll actually run for you because you need to make it executable. Just, just a note on that. So let's run it now. It should do nothing, and it does do nothing. It's dead quick because it just checks if everything is mounted, and it is. So now I'm going to unmount my drive, and very quickly afterwards, I'm going to um, run this script. So I'm going to get rid of that, and then I'm going to run this. Oh, that's interesting. The Is that because it's... There we go. <laughs> um, my mistake. So the the I needed to pass the um, the actual folder to unmount it instead of because I'm sitting the, the mistake there was I'm sitting at my user's home directory. So anyway, so that's now unmounted. So if I run NAS remount, um, and then if I look at the log file which now exists, we can see it says general home backup which is the name of my mount has been detected to not be mounted check failed and now it's remounted it again so if i now run dot nas remount again yeah nothing's happened it was instant yeah and the log file just shows that one entry from before so it works fine so then what you want to do is you want to put it into your cron tab so for me because i have pseudo access without a password I can, I can make this work using my current user. So crontab minus E, and I go to my, my crontab area here um, where I can define my jobs. I've got my backup cron here, NAS backup process, but I've also got this one, which is what I'm talking about here, NAS remount. And this is the cron configuration to run every minute. So uh, I'm not gonna talk about cron. If you want to learn about these things, have a look at my Linux Essentials course. But the point is I've just made my file run once a minute. So it'll run this every minute and it'll do nothing until it detects a mount has been dropped and then it will remount it. And that's basically how it works. So I hope you found that useful. It is that simple. It's one of my shorter videos and I hope you find it of benefit. If you do, please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much and I'll see you in my next video.